Hi everyone, welcome back to the Little Green Pasture. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isn't it wonderful to praise the Lord? Isn't it wonderful to look up and away from this earth and to change the direction of our eyes, what we're looking at, to cast them upon the Lord and say, thank you, Lord, for the, all the glorious things you've done for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before I get started, I would like to welcome so many new subscribers. And I just wanted to really just extend a warm welcome to you and say how nice it is to have you here. I pray that you will come to know that here you will drink of living waters and be fed with the bread of life, Jesus Christ. So the little green pasture is for the hungry and the thirsty. And believe me when I tell you, I'm just as hungry and thirsty for the Lord as you are. Now, before I get started, I'm going to pray. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord, that what time we're afraid we can put our trust in you. And there's no one like you, Lord. And Jesus, thank you that you are with us this day. You're with us always. That your word is true that you will never leave us, never forsaking us, even until the end of the world. Lord, I pray that you will be honored and blessed and bring comfort to them by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, um, you heard me say, talking about fear, what time we are afraid, David says, what time I am afraid, I will put my trust in you, O Lord, for thou hast never forsaken them that seek you. You know, some of the best messages I've ever heard in my life, really, and always will be, are from people who've been there. Don't you agree? You know, there's certain people, <clears throat> maybe you have close friends or not, I don't know, but most of us have one person that we can go to and pretty much let it all hang out and share what's going on in our life. But you know, at some point, they can't fully help us the way the Lord Jesus Christ can help us. They don't have that power. We love them and we bless them because we know they love us and that they'll pray for us. And today I want to talk to you about fear and being terrified. I knew I wanted to do a message today, but I went before the Lord empty handed because I live at the well. So I came to the Lord. I went to the Lord as usual. And I said, Lord, show me today what you want me to share with your people. But I look at it as more than sharing with you because Christ is that great shepherd of the sheep. And he's the one who feeds you and me. And I have learned through the years to not be so stuck on trying to have a message here, a message there, or formulate that. I've let a lot of that go. And I've, I, I have enjoyed the flow of his rivers from heaven flowing to me, a simple earthen vessel. And I think of that word in Song of Solomon even now that says, your name is like ointment poured forth. And anything he pours into you or me, must it has an eternal stream 
it's meant to go forth. Well, as I was sitting quietly and doing my thing this morning, I talked to a friend and this friend of mine was very upset. Actually, we didn't talk. She left me some messages, same thing. And she was upset and crying and, and for good reason, for good human reason. And I know this person, she loves the Lord. She's strong in the Lord all the time. But isn't there something once in a while that comes around like the big sledgehammer behind the knees? And down we go. Down we go. And her words were, I don't know what's wrong with me. I I, I just feel so weak. I, 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 I'm so strong at other times. And right now in this thing that's happening, I... I just feel so weak and I just can't get myself to that place where I can be strong and trust the Lord and get myself to that place. And she was saying this through tears. You know, I immediately, as I was listening to her messages, my heart started to beat and I started to feel that movement of the Holy Spirit, even in my own spirit. Like I was saying, I listen to people who have been there before. I hear that better than I hear a thousand sermons spoken in a thousand different ways. But the person who has been in the dark, who has been uh, two nights and three days, or as Paul says, in the deep, or who has been in the well, in the miry clay and heard the voice of the Lord speaking, saying, I will deliver you. There are voices that we listen to, voices you listen to. Sometimes you're seeking the Lord so much and you're watching YouTube video learnings and teachings one after another, and you could listen to three of them, but only one thing will be heard. And that is the one thing the Lord has spoken to you about. And the Lord is, he is the living God. Never forget, he is the living God, which actually means every other small g God is dead. And he is alive. David said, what time I am afraid, I will put my trust in thee. As I said earlier. He said, because thou, Lord, has never forsaken them that seek you. But have you ever been hit or maybe you've just been hit? And maybe you got some bad news last week. And what you were before in strength and in prayer and in faith and reading your Bible and all of that, you're like, I can't get myself there. I, I can't stand up. Let me let me say this to you. Jesus is not waiting for you to become some dynamic spiritual superhero. So he'll hear you better. Jesus has no expectation of that from you. On the contrary, he wants you to be still. He wants you to be still. Let me share a small story with you on that. It was after I had newly become, I was about to become a widow and I knew it. And it was getting closer and closer to that moment. And I remember being so exhausted, so terrified not knowing anything what is going to happen to me. I had nobody except one person that was helping me during that time. And that person was so good to me. She opened up her door to me. She let me stay there at her house for an interim. But there was one night I came home just so I could sleep shower and sleep 
and get up the next morning to go back to the hospital. And I remember I was so thoroughly exhausted and I was shaking so much that even my insides were shaking. Like, have you ever had that where you're just internally shaking? I mean, it was so deep, the fear, the terror, the exhaustion. And me, I'm always looking to the Lord, always praying, trying to get myself back up to that place, trying to talk to the Lord. But every time I would try, I was flat. I was empty. I had nothing. But yet I was so desperate for the Lord, so desperate. It was such a time of great darkness for me. And that one night I went home and I got in bed and I was laying there and I heard him. I I, I felt not, I'm not going to say I heard him, but it was this something greater than just hearing him. It was get up and open your Bible. And I was like, I have no power to get out of the bed. And it became stronger get up, get out of bed and open your Bible. So it was about three times, maybe four. And finally I said, I don't want to miss out on anything because I didn't have, I couldn't even talk. I was so tired. I couldn't even pray in my mind. And I turned the light on. My Bible was on the floor with my little bag. And I said, I don't, I'm so tired, Jesus. I said that in my mind, crying. I don't even know where to look. And right where I opened it, it was Psalm 4610. Right my eyes went down. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. And you know, I closed that Bible. I got back in bed. And looking back now, I see that all the way that he led me in his ways. He took care of me until I could stand up on my own two feet. And it took a long time. And therefore, I, I, whatever he said to me, not whatever, what he said, be still and know that I'm God. And looking back, I say, to you whatever you're going through right now and you can't get off the floor and you can't even pray stop beating up yourself stop it stop trying to get yourself to be some kind of an something that you were when nothing's happening and the sun is shining and everything's going great and be still and i can i say you can be sure that god will never say to you stand still or sit still or be still unless he means to do something see we hear those words and we become afraid like no i have to go i have to i have to god's not asking you to do anything see him telling us be still means he's about to do something for you. And you know, sometimes he'll get us to the place where we are so exhausted and we cannot keep anything up anymore until we are still because now we are just there now. You know, I think of that, those scriptures, all of us, we've heard so many times where it says um, in Psalm, Proverbs 3, 5 through 8, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path and it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. And, you know, we read that so fast that we say, and especially when we're in a panic of fear, we'll read something really fast. It's like, because we're desperate. Because we're so desperate, we're trying to grab on like a person who's fallen into a raging river and they're trying to, they're thrashing around and they're going by the bank of the, of the land and roots from trees are sticking out of the side and they're grabbing onto the roots of the trees and they're hanging on. 
And I think that when we become so desperate, when we become so full of fear, and then we try to read his word, then we read something, trust the Lord with all your heart. When you're trying to build yourself up, you have to stop trying to do that. See, when it says, first of all, trust in the Lord, he's, he's turning the direction of your eyes off of yourself and off everything. And this is the first thing, you know, he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's really directional. You see, because the things that are happening to you right now are happening here on earth and they're coming in different directions and you're being attacked and you're maybe you're sick and you don't know if you're going to live. Maybe you've been given a terminal illness diagnosis. Maybe you've been met with divorce papers. Maybe somebody that you love so much has just gone in for life in prison. Maybe you lost someone that you love. Maybe you lost all your money. I mean, it is endless, great losses. But when it says trust in the Lord with all your heart, God's not expecting you to all of a sudden build up some kind of a froth to say, I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. Look, God's not looking for you to do that. He, see, it says, lean not unto thine own understanding. See, our own understanding. Jesus says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways. He says, as high as the heaven is above the earth, so are my ways, not your ways, and your thoughts, not my thoughts, right? But you've read your you've read the bible you've heard verses you're getting the thoughts of god towards you and god is no liar and yes you know i think of that scripture in psalm 66 verse 6 i know it's kind of a crazy number but after all it's just numbers it says uh i have it written down here it says he turned the sea into dry land and they went through the flood on foot there did we rejoice in him notice there's a they and a we He's looking back at history, at God's history. And he is, David is saying, I basically, those are my people. I was, I could say I was with them. Because he says, they went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him. See, and it says, in all your ways, acknowledge him acknowledge him he'll direct your path but let me go back to lean not into your own understanding so your understanding is you know you're you're encased in this humanity this this body of death that's why i mean i ever more think about it isn't it wonderful that jesus took upon him the form of us the body he said the a body god hath for give it unto me because this body is a body of death. But when you're made alive, being born again, you're quickened and you're made alive in your spirit, but you're still enhoused in, in, in this earthly tent. And so you're going to feel pain. You're going to feel terror. You're going to feel all of those things. But I'll tell you something. It was in all those things throughout the whole Bible that all those people that you read about, every one of them were just like you and me. They were afraid. They were terrified. But they leaned not on their own understanding. And it was in their terror they cried out to the Lord. It wasn't when there were no wars. You don't hear about people crying out to the Lord in the Bible. Well, there was no war for 40 years. You don't hear people crying out to the Lord for mercy when they don't need mercy, when there's plenty of money in the bank and everybody's healthy and everything's fine. But I want you to think about something right now. Jesus is, see, every word of God is inspired, but God is not expecting you to build up something that he knows you cannot do, and you are in the best place possible. Paul said when he he prayed, Lord, remove this thorn from my side, and the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. He said, therefore, now do I rather glory in my infirmities for when I'm weak, then he is strong. When I'm weak, the power of God rests on me. So don't lean on your own understanding. Lean into the Lord. And look up. Look, and I mean literally, cast your eyes upwards. Believe me when I tell you this, it works every time. That when you look upwards, at up 
and away, you are looking up to the Lord. It takes you out of this earth in a sense. There's something about that. We read about so many people in the Bible, Bible who say they looked up into the heavens. Even um, uh, in, in Psalm 121, David said, um, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. He, something about what you're looking at. Paul, the, uh, Peter and John, when they went to the temple, beautiful, and they saw the man crippled from birth who was laid at the gate, beautiful. And then when they were coming by, that beggar looked up to them, thinking that they were going to receive something from them. But Peter said to the beggar, he said, look upon us look at us and he looked upon him that's all he did he looked upon him they were full of the power the spirit was present to heal and he stretched forth his hand and he his right hand and he lifted him up because remember he said look silver and gold have i not i don't have anything to give you i've got nothing he said but what i have i give unto you see there's a flow of power the flow of the life of Jesus Christ. He said, but what I have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And as he said that, he took him by his right hand and he lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he began to walk and he began to leap. And he followed them walking and leaping them, leaping into the temple. The Lord, when, when we're told, lean not into your own understanding, he's saying, lean on me, lean on me. Because Jesus is not a bowing wall or a tottering fence. Have you ever leaned on somebody that you thought you can trust? And even the most trustworthy in our lives that would love to do as much as they can for us, there's a limitation to what they can do for you. And that's on purpose. It says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. Look, whatever path you're on right now, it may not be one you like. But he is walking with you on that path. You know that saying, the scripture in Romans chapter 8, it says, for ye are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. And we know that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. We can read all those scriptures, but I want to talk about that one where he says, for we, you, ye are more than conquerors. You know, you don't become a conqueror overnight. Yes, we have conquered sin, death, and hell through the blood of Jesus Christ. Our name's written in heaven, but there's an earthly life that you're walking right now. And you're walking through a storm. And you're walking through a pitch black, dark night. And you feel all alone and nobody understands you. And people want to hide their face from you like they did to Jesus. They, he had no form or comeliness that he, they would be attracted to him. They hid their faces from him, from him, and that you could say, yes, their faces are hid from me. There is no man that would know me. I found no refuge for my soul. I feel like as though I'm free among the dead. I've been there, and I'm telling you, Jesus Christ walked with me through that path. I went through the flood on foot. And now there do I rejoice in him in memory. They rejoiced as they went through that flood on foot on dry land. But we see the offspring of them saying, there did we rejoice. The, see, the, the rejoicing continues forever and ever because all the works and acts of the Lord are meant to continue forever and ever it's not just one time do you understand what I'm saying let me put it to you this way it says be not I, let, I want to jump down here because it says um be still and know that I am God he said I'll be exalted among the heathen I'll be exalted in the earth see he's going to be exalted and is exalted in heaven and he will ever be exalted forever and ever on earth 
well past the thousand year millennial reign in a new heaven and a new earth. Because everything that God does glorifies the sun. And everything Jesus has ever done always points to the Father. And you have that Father. He's your Father in heaven through the blood of Jesus Christ. You're a child of the house. And right now, you may feel all alone, and maybe physically you are. But Jesus said, Father, I am alone, but I am not alone, for you are with me. And the only time, the only human in history who ever said I, <laughs> that was alone was the most grueling several hours on that cross when even his father looked away. So you see, Jesus knows what it feels like. And Jesus is not somebody that is distant from you. And though you don't feel his presence, depend upon this. When he tells you, and lo, I am with you always, even into the end of the world. I was thinking about that word today. And I thought about that word in John 13, where Jesus says, um, for the things concerning me have an end. And he was talking obviously concerning his end, meaning on earth, the sacrifice, but there is no end for what is eternal. You've been made eternal. You've been made righteous. You have been made righteous in the Lord. And I want to share something. This just popped into my head right now. So I started doing notes, you know, me and my notes. So I started doing notes. I was in Proverbs and I started to see so many places starting from chapter 11 of Proverbs. And I saw this about being righteous, because if you're born again, then you have been made the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. You agree to that, right? You've trusted the Lord with your life. You have confessed him. You have confessed your sins. You have made him your savior and Lord. You have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So your righteousness is of him. And I started to see this. And so I have these scriptures. I'm not going to say them all because there's way too many. But listen to this. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. The upright shall be had in everlasting remembrance. His righteousness endureth forever. Righteousness delivers from death. And the Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish. And the mouth of the righteous is a well of life. The desire of the righteous shall be granted. The righteous is an everlasting foundation. The righteous shall never be moved. The upright love thee. Isn't that beautiful? I can go on and on. But you could do your own word study. But I want to comfort your heart today. And I pray that these words will flow into your heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because they're not, they're words I, I received from the consolation I receive from the Holy Spirit. You're going to be okay. The Lord is going to carry you. The path that you're on, you won't be on forever. He'll direct all of your paths. When you can't walk anymore, he's going to carry you. If you have no strength, he'll be your strength. What you can't hold up anymore, he's going to uphold all of your goings that your footsteps will not slide. I think of those words in Isaiah 50, verse 7, and it says, Who is it? Who is it that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the Lord and stay upon his name. I think of another word in Psalm 50 where it says, I know that the Lord will help me. Therefore have, I will not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint and I know I shall not be ashamed. 
in Psalm 34, if you're suffering, that has been the chapter for me in chapter chapter 34. I've got like three quarters of it memorized. You know why? Because I spent so many years in that chapter. And part of it is I sought the Lord and he, he heard me. And he delivered me from all my fears. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his troubles. There's so many promises of God that will shine forever. These words are eternal. They belong to you. And Jesus is the word. And he will never let you go. He will never, ever let the enemy overwhelm you, though it feels like it right now. Lean into the Lord. Look up into the Lord. Can you look up? You may not be able to speak. You may not even be able to think a thought because you've been sucker punched. I've been there. But there were times all I can do was look up in that sky. All the gods of the nations are idols. But our God, your God, made the heavens. And his word is forever settled in heaven. And that settles it for you. You know, I told my friend today, stop trying to be strong. Stop trying to be that superhero Christian. Become a puddle at his feet. Lean on the Lord. In Genesis 33, 27, it says, with the Lord, our God, is mercy. And underneath are the everlasting arms. And his arms, I love Song of Solomon. For his, his, his right arm held me and his left hand held me up. He has these arms and they're real. Lean into the everlasting arms. Be still. And know, just like that writer Isaiah said, I know I will not be ashamed. I know, David said, that the Lord maintains the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. You're going to be okay. And one day, you're going to look back and you're going to remember they went through the flood. God parted those seas, right? He parted those seas. He turned the sea. He turned that sea that you went through into dry land. You're going to remember that you went through that flood on foot. And in that place, even in your eternal glory, you're going to say, there did I rejoice in him. Look up to the Lord and lean backwards. Just fall back into those real everlasting arms where you'll find mercy and grace and he'll carry you. And then all he will see all of this too will cause exalting in the earth. People will see what he did for you. And then one day in heaven, you'll say, now I rejoice. And you could rejoice now and spend time today and often saying, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you are full of mercy. Lamentations 3.23, this I recall to mind. Therefore, have I hope, never stop hoping in God. He's the hope that does not disappoint. Therefore, have I hope. That's what he said. Therefore, have I hope. 
it is because of the Lord's mercies that I am not consumed, say it like that. His compassions, they fail not. You know why? Because his love never fails. And then you can say, great is thy faithfulness, O God. You know why? His name is faithful. And if he doesn't help you, then you're going to be the only person in heaven who will stand there amongst the billions of people. But see, that can never happen. You're going to be okay. He's going to give you everything you need. Be still and know that he is Lord. And he's going to be exalted through the demonstration of his power, of his love in your life, in this world, even in the world to come, in life everlasting.